Hello guys and welcome back to a, another tutorial with me, Pug Gaming. And today we are going to be talking about the cinematic camera. We'll cover the basics of how to use it and how I personally use it to make my cinematics so great. And yes, I know there are a hundred of different ways to create beautiful cinematics. We all know our own little way, but I'm going to share to you how I do so. So let's get on with it. So firstly, why cinematics? Well, cinematics are a fantastic way to really show off all those hours of work you put into your current build. And the cinematic camera makes life so much easier, even when you're creating builds with very, very poor FPS. First job, make sure you go onto the workshop and download, subscribe, and make sure you've enabled the cinematic camera extended mod. Now, let's just go through a couple of the options first. So most of this makes sense already. You have the points here, which is where you've selected the viewpoints. You can change the time selection in these categories here to speed up or slow down the amount of time. You can even make the playback speed faster, 1 by 16 being the fastest, and all the way bottom to make it even slower. The FPS is enabled by clicking the button to turn blue, and you can change to the exact FPS you want to record in. So that's going to force the play and make life a lot easier when you're dealing with extremely low <laughs> frames per second. But rather than me rabbit on, let me show you firsthand how to do this. And we can go through each option as I do it, as I find playing the game and watching someone do it makes life a lot easier. So first job is to open the cinematic camera mod and you want to place down a marker where you want the first cinematic to be. So press the plus button on zone one and then the second button when you press the plus is where you want the cinematics to end. Now this is where things take a bit of time to get used to and really find out your best way to record. Clicking the plus on the end point we are now able to also change the playback speed. So to give you an idea this is played back at the fastest time at times sorry x8 so you can see that's a very very quick cinematic and it wouldn't look too good um, if you was to release that but we can also change this as well we can change the values here this is what slows down and increases the length of time of each shot we can change the FPS as we spoke about earlier but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change it to the slowest version which is 1 by 16 so this is gonna be an extremely slow um, recording this is the sort of recording we want that we can then speed up later on to really make this look very, very realistic and smooth. So at this point, you need to also decide what you're gonna use as your video capturing. So I'm using a software called Bandicam. This one seems to be the best one. I've reviewed quite a lot of different um, versions of this. I'm paying for the, pr the premium version of Bandicam. So there is a free version as well, but I'm not too sure what the limitations are firsthand. But the way this works is as I'm pressing the play button to do the cinematics, I'm also pressing the shortcut on my keyboard to then record that frame itself um, using Bandicam. So that's what you want to do. You want to try and find yourself a suitable um, video capture. I know there's various ones out there. You can even use OBS if you wanted to. Um, so do that. And then what we need to do next is move into the editing software that you are using personally. So what I'm using is Premiere Pro CC 2018. It's the best that I've found and I've used it for many, many months now and very used to it. So it's certainly one that I would highly recommend if you want to pay for one. There are free ones out there as well. Uh, but make sure you pick one that you're able to get used to. If you want to have all the extra editing options, Premiere Pro is probably the best one for you, but something more simplicity you can probably get away with Windows Movie Maker, to be honest. I used to use that many, many, many moons ago. But anyway, once you do that, we can then start with the video editing to really get the best that we can out of this. So now if you hop into your video software, and what you wanna do is place in there the recording you just did. So exactly as I've just done here, chuck this in, make sure it's all working fine. It should be, it should be fine. And what we wanna do now, is do three more only for the purpose of this video you don't need to do three in particular but what i want to do is i want to show you the differences between each of these settings so we're going to do three videos here 
all using the same footage, but we're going to slow them down at different rates. So we'll be able to give a better understanding of how it looks and what you can achieve. So first of all, let's click on the first one and we're going to reduce the time scale right down to, to about 400 for the starter one. And then follow the same process to the other two. And we're going to change those to 400, 600, and then we'll do the last one at 800. So now that's done, you can see we have three videos, well, three bits of footage, each with a different speed scale. So we got the 400, 600, 800. So let's start off with the first recording, which is going to be the 400. So as you can see, just by speeding it up by 400%, things are looking a lot better. It's a really smooth line and the vehicles are moving at a very good speed. So that's a really good video footage there. We've been able to speed up. Now, if we jump over to the 600, as you can see, very similar. It's just a little bit more smoother. Vehicles are moving slightly faster, so it depends on what approach you want to give in terms of the speed of the vehicle. Some time lapses and cinematics look beautiful when they're really, really fast zooming around. Others just look good when they're realistic. And as you can see, as we're getting slower and slower, things are looking a lot more sharper and a lot more smoother. Now, if we jump into the final one, which is the 800% increase in speed, we can see that this now is probably the smoothest that we've got. But the vehicles are moving faster, so again, it depends on what realism you want. But between the three, the quality is all very, very similar. So it certainly proves that if you record a much slower frame rate and a lot slower speed, whilst increasing the speed in your video footage, you're going to get an overall much better cinematic view and we're going to jump into another recording that i worked on and this proves that it's not just the editing software and the editing process that makes these videos great you need to make sure that your line path of your actual recording are spot on because that really does make a good cinematic if your recordings are not very nice in terms of what angles they're showing off you can get a very ugly looking cinematic. It may look beautiful and smooth, but you really need to make sure that what you're recording is what you want to achieve. And the best way to do that, like I said before, is just do a few practice shots. Put down one marker, put down the end marker, drop the speeds right down so it's quickly gonna go across it. And you can make sure that everything that you are wanting to get is in the shot. And to be honest, I do spend a good sort of five, 10 attempts to really make sure I'm getting the footage I want. The last thing you want to do is record and find out that it's not actually what you wanted and you've wasted a good five to ten minutes because it does take that long when you slow the video right down. And you can see here the options. You can also record um, in auto mode, which I normally do, um, or you can change it to be an in and out version, which just depends on how many points you're putting down as to what's going to show. As you can see, changing it to 16 speed really does go super fast, a little bit too quick for testing. But I normally do it in around sort of one or two just to get that real effect off and make sure you're doing what you need to do. Again, making sure you're always using the FPS button as well, choosing the frame rate that you think you should be up to using. I normally try and match it as best as I can to what the game footage is given out to avoid any spikes, but 15, 10, 15 seems to be the best. Another thing as well to keep in mind is the FOV. Now this is a very unique feature of cinematic camera which allows you to change the perspective of what you're recording. So not only can you make it zoom really far in, but you can give some really good sort of tunnel eye visions as well. So what we're gonna show off here is a really close up view of this side here and as you can see moving all the way over 20 being the absolute minimum you zoom in super far and the only downside to zooming in this well this close is some of the props and vehicles don't allow it to be focused properly as you can see there you might have caught that vehicle in the background but that vehicle there will not render properly at this sort of um well this closest probably the best way to say that but that doesn't mean you can't still get some amazing shots. And just look at this, just zooming in super close really does change the perspective of this cinematic compared to what we looked at earlier. And I'm running through here at a slow speed just to make sure that everything's in there. 
that I wanted and as you can see I'm happy with that so that's all good and I'll then change to my 116 or 18 depending on what I want to get out of the video and then change the duration in seconds depending on what you want to do you can do this as you please and by all means do a bit of testing because some work better than others depending on what you're recording it's not always going to be the best at the same settings but as you can see here really happy of how this come about the movement is perfect in terms of the scale i probably would have preferred no vehicles to go across here one because at this viewing angle it doesn't quite look as good but it gives you an idea on how smooth you can get these these um, screenshots going. Now again, going back to the cinematics, it's not all about what you know, it's also down to your eye itself. And very much like an artist, you need to make sure you're getting the best out of what you're looking at. And one thing a lot of people forget about is lighting. Now as you can see from this shot here, the lighting is not that nice. Um, it could do with a bit of a change of direction of the sun. So using Ultimate Eye Candy, you can change the longitude and latitude of where the sun is, which then changes the whole perspective of what you're looking at. So as you can see here, I wanted to create a nice sort of summer's day here. So moving these across, playing around with it, there's never a exact um, measurement that works best for all. I would just take each shot as they come and just mess around with it. Once you've got your ideal LUT and theme, this is the next step to make sure you get some super, super um, videos out of this so just mess around and see how you get on but anyway guys that pretty much brings us to the end of this tutorial I'm hoping this has given you a bit of extra help now in terms of creating your own cinematics hopefully these tips will now allow you to expand on what you already know and create those even better cinematics than what you were as I said earlier, this is purely my own methods and there are certainly other ways to use the cinematic camera. And I know a lot of you have already got your favourite way of doing so, but by all means, why not share your own settings and comments in the section below and help everyone else achieve the very best cinematics that they possibly can. Because we all deserve to show off our beautiful work, hard hours in a very fashionable way. Other than that guys, Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in any other tutorials, please by all means let me know what you would like to see and I'm very happy to work on something. Other than that guys, thank you for your time and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching and all the best.